On April 11, 1970, Apollo 13 launched from Kennedy Space Center with three astronauts bound for the moon. Despite the recent success of lunar missions, disaster struck when an oxygen tank exploded about 330,000 kilometers from Earth. This critical failure jeopardized their return, pushing them farther from Earth than any humans before. With the spacecraft veering off course, their lunar landing dream turned into a fight for survival. Now, the only question that was coming to mind was will the astronauts safely return to the Earth? This should be seen as the Cold War. Apollo missions symbolized America's technological prowess in the space race with the Soviet Union. After the success of Apollo 11 and 12, public interest waned, leading to budget cuts for NASA. Apollo 13, initially aimed at scientific exploration, aimed to connect public and government enthusiasm for space. The spacecraft comprised the command module, service module, lunar module, and launch escape system. Despite facing initial crew changes, Apollo 13 lifted off successfully on April 11, 1970, with Commander Jim Lovell, Lunar Module Pilot Fred Hayes, and Command Module Pilot Jack Swigert. Despite a smaller audience compared to previous missions, Apollo 13 faced unforeseen challenges that would test NASA's capabilities and resilience. The spacecraft started its trip to the Fra Mauro crater on the moon without any problems. They expected it to take about three days to get there. Everything was going smoothly at first. But then, astronaut Jack Swigert realized he forgot to do his taxes. He asked if he could have more time. Mission Control joked back, saying he could get a 60-day extension. Uh-oh, have you guys completed your income tax? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I got a... Hey, that, that it, it's too funny. It kinda, things kind of happen real fast down there. And I, I do need an extension. Huh? I didn't get mine filed. I'm really serious. This little conversation showed that things were going well. For the first couple of days, everything was fine. About 46 hours and 43 minutes into the mission, the person talking to the astronauts said everything was still good, but the crew was getting a bit bored. Things were going so smoothly that people in the spacecraft were getting bored. On the third day of the mission, April 13th, the crew had tests to do on the lunar module and a TV broadcast plant. But since TV networks weren't interested, only Commander Lovell's wife watched at mission control. After the broadcast ended, about six and a half minutes later, flight controllers asked Swiger to check the oxygen levels, a routine task. Suddenly, there was a big explosion, lights flashing, alarms blaring. Lovell told Mission Control, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey, Houston, we've had a problem here. One oxygen tank was empty, the other was losing oxygen fast. They needed urgent action to save the astronauts. Despite TV networks initially ignoring the mission, it suddenly became headline news. The oxygen tanks, shaped like spheres, stored liquid oxygen and had heaters to turn it into gas. Tank number two from Apollo 10 had been damaged during modifications. Despite efforts to empty it, a big problem went unnoticed. Extreme heat damaged insulation and wires inside the tank. Before the mission, NASA's managers and engineers had thoroughly investigated the tank and approved it, but they couldn't detect the internal damage. So, during the routine check on the third day of the Apollo 13 mission, a spark from those damaged electric wires caused the tank to explode. Luckily, the tank was outside the spacecraft. If it had been inside, all the astronauts would have been instantly killed. Only a 13-foot panel in the service module was damaged. What else was damaged in the spacecraft, the astronauts weren't sure. Now, an important decision had to be made. How to return to Earth. The fastest way was to rotate the spacecraft, but this required starting the main engine near the blast. The second option was to go toward the moon, circle around it, and return to Earth without using the service module's engine. However, this route would take four, five days, and there were concerns about oxygen and water supplies. NASA's flight director chose the second option, 
the longer route. The astronauts were instructed to shut down the CSM module immediately and use the lunar module as a lifeboat on the journey back. Although the decision to use the lunar module for the return journey was safer, it presented several challenges. The lunar module was designed for only two astronauts and a 20-hour duration, intended for moon landings and reattachment to the CSM module. Now, three astronauts were expected to endure four to five days in it. Additionally, the lunar module's engines were not built for repeated firing, adding to the risk. To conserve supplies and energy, all non-essential systems, including heaters, were shut down because they needed to save electricity. Following the plan, the astronauts boarded the lunar module and performed the first engine burn to adjust their trajectory, reaching the far side of the moon. They set a record as the farthest humans from Earth, a record unbroken to this day. At their farthest, they were 400,000 kilometers from Earth. Remaining on this trajectory would have led them to Earth in 153 hours, with only a slim margin of one hour of surplus supplies upon arrival, deemed too risky by NASA. Thus, the astronauts were instructed to perform a second engine burn. Mission control engineers had calculated whether the lunar module's engine could handle this burn. Their calculations proved correct, reducing the flight time from 153 hours to 143 hours, providing an 11-hour survival margin. Before the astronauts could relax, another problem emerged – high levels of carbon dioxide. Spaceships use lithium hydroxide canisters to remove carbon dioxide from the air. However, the lunar module's canisters were only meant for two people for two days, not three people for four days. Fortunately, there were spare canisters in the command module, but their shape didn't fit the lunar module's system. With just 24 hours to find a solution, the astronauts described their surroundings to ground experts. They improvised with plastic bags, cardboard, suit hoses, and duct tape, creating a makeshift device to solve the problem. Commander Lovell described it as not very attractive but effective. Throughout the rescue mission, attention to even the smallest details was crucial. Astronauts were instructed to limit their water intake to 200 milliliters per day to avoid excess urination which could affect the spacecraft's balance. Due to their limited water intake, the astronauts collectively lost 14 kilograms in weight. Astronaut Hayes developed a urinary tract infection during the ordeal. Upon nearing Earth after four days, they realized an additional burn was necessary, as their calculations hadn't accounted for the spacecraft's cooling vapor, causing it to veer off course. Commander Lovell executed another burn using the lunar module, bringing the spacecraft back on track. Remarkably, the spacecraft endured this third burn despite being designed for just one. The world anxiously followed the news, awaiting the astronauts' return. Their families and friends gathered to watch the events unfold on TV. As the broken spacecraft entered Earth's atmosphere, a communication blackout occurred lasting longer than expected, typically lasting two, three minutes due to air ionization. This blackout extended to four minutes and 27 seconds. Worries mounted until finally communication was re-established and relief swept over those watching. All three astronauts had survived. The command module deployed its parachute and gently landed into the Pacific Ocean. Teamwork, good leadership, and thinking outside the box was necessary, said one of the astronauts upon their safe return. Despite the mission's failure and none of them setting foot on the moon, Apollo 13 left an incredible mark on history, showcasing bravery. Numerous books and films have recounted the dramatic rescue mission. NASA implemented many safety measures following the incident to prevent similar accidents in future missions. Subsequent Apollo missions, including Apollo 14, Apollo 15, Apollo 16, and Apollo 17, were all successful. Apollo 17, NASA's final mission under the program, saw astronauts spending three days on the moon's surface. To this day, it remains the last human journey to the moon.
concluding the Apollo era on December 7, 1972. That's it for today.